Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a card for last week's Color Throwdown Challenge, which I was the host of. <laughs> uh, I've been having issues, issues, man. Anyway, it has been crazy hot here, crazy hot, and I work in my garage, and I don't have air conditioning in here, and it's just hasn't been working. However, starting to get back into it, finding ways around it. So for this card... I will have the link to the challenge in my blog post. I'll have the inspiration image, all of that, because you can still play along even when the challenge is over, and we have a new one every single week. All that is explained on the Color Throwdown blog, which I link to in my blog post. So I started off by die cutting some white cardstock with Simon's Etched Layered Daisy Stem, and then I'm coloring it, them in with Copic markers. And the colors are for the challenge. However, the colors are actually inspired by uh, one of the flowers that I was growing in my planters this summer. And it was just so pretty. It's got like, it's an osteopernum. So it's got yellow on the edges and it has purple right at the very like base of each of the petals. It goes from like a purple to a little bit of a pink and then kind of a white and yellow. So... That's what I did for all the coloring. I kept it really, really simple. This is super sped up in editing as well. It still didn't take very long. My very first attempt there in the first few seconds of the video, um, I left it in, but I didn't end up using it. I had kind of done too much purple. So I redid it how you see here, just, just that little bit, you know, close to the edges, like it looks in real life. And then once I was happy with the petals, I colored the centers with a couple of very dark browns. And I did the same with the like under layer. I added a bit of the brown so that none of the white cardstock's kind of peeking through. And then of course greens for the leaves and the stems. Again, just simple. Coloring die cuts like this is therapeutic in a way. I don't know. It just... There's so many ways you can color these. You can just die cut them from colored cardstock. You could do ink blending. I've shown on videos, you know, doing watercolor. Like, the sky's the limit. So, once I was happy with them, I'm gluing them together with Craft Hockey Glue. And again, it's been super hot in here. Not only is it just almost unbearable to even be in here, but trying to create, like, my glue takes a thousand times longer to set. <laughs> which sometimes is nice. But, you know, it's like goodness what you know what I normally expect of things and it's like wow this isn't dry yet or this glue hasn't set yet yeah, heat does that you know so anyway I adhered the layers you know to create my little bloom and then I glued on the stem once I was happy with those I set them aside to properly dry and then for another element. I'm using the arches background. I've used this in multiple videos. It's still a favorite. I reach for it all the time. So I've got the background stamp. I have it face up on my desk and I'm inking it up with salvaged patina distress oxide ink and purposely not inking it up fully. I'm also not pressing, you know, solid. It depends on the look I'm going for, but I didn't want a perfect, you know, perfect stamp background. So once it was stamped, I put it in my little splat box and then I'm going to spray it with some salvage patina distress oxide spray. I haven't been watching a lot of crafty videos lately. I have a million to catch up on, but I caught part of one by Nicole Spore and I was like, ooh, I love how she's doing these texture backgrounds. And that's basically what she's doing is like kind of tone on tone using the stamp and then adding a spray. And I was like, oh, like <laughs> must copy. <laughs> So that's what I did. And then when it was dry, I die cut it with one of the dome, nested domed arches wafer dies. And then I also pulled out, or pulled out, I don't even bother putting this one away. This is the Bold Thanks wafer die. I use this all the time. I die cut some yellow cardstock three times with that. And then I'm stacking those together with craft hockey glue. Now things like this, it's kind of nice that the glue is taking longer because of the heat. <laughs> Gives me extra wiggle time. Although again, I don't have a problem with this glue. Certain glues dry super, super quickly, like super quickly. Like I think it's collage. Is it collage medium from Tim Holtz? Yeah, that one. I like how he's like, it has a dry time of now. <laughs> so I wouldn't use that for things like this. So anyway, 
stacked those layers together to give this the dimension that I wanted. And then I took my card base, which is just more white cardstock, and I'm going to put my post-it tape right at the score line. So that's going to mask off like the upper portion of the inside of the card. And I'm going to use the background again. I'm going to ink it up again with that salvage patina. Again, not inking it up perfectly. I'm also going to take a piece of just scrap paper and press that down into the background to take off the first, you know, impression of ink. This way I'm going to get the second generation on the inside of my card. So just a little bit lighter, not quite as intense. So pressing down the inside of my card and again, not pressing perfectly, just kind of going around with my fingers because there's just something sometimes about that like uneven look. So I've got that stamped on the inside. And then my little companion sentiments are from the uh, All the Thanks sentiment strip pack. I trimmed down the ones I wanted. And the one for the inside of the card, I just used a couple of those yellow Copic markers to add some color to it. Just because. Just to get to stand out a little bit more on the inside. So I just colored those with the chisel tip of those markers. And then once I was happy with how that looked, I'm going to adhere that to the inside of the card with the craft tacky glue because it gives me that little bit of wiggle room. So get that adhered to the inside of the card. After I've adhered that, I used uh, Simon's Big Mama foam tape on the back of the arch die cut piece. So coated the back of that with the foam tape. Once that's in place, I will peel off the backing and then I'm going to adhere this to my card front. Once I've got this adhered, I'm then going to adhere my two little die cut and colored flowers, and then I can adhere my sentiments. So again, craft tacky glue, got those on the back of the flowers, adhered that into place on top of this little arch here. And I kind of had them like held together as I was adding glue so I can just pop them both on at the same time because they're kind of not just overlapping, but I kind of interwound them with the leaves and everything. So I got those adhered and then I'll adhere my die cut sentiment with the craft hacky glue. And then I have another little companion sentiment from that all the thanks sentiment strip pack. And that I'm going to adhere with some little thin foam squares. So I just cut those in half, pop them on the back of that and then pop this into place. And as always, like a broken record, <laughs> you could always leave it here, but I'm gonna add bling. Because I've got all the colors and all the types and all the brands, you know. I've got three different colors of pearls. I was only going to use one, but then I'm like, oh, I have yellow and purple and pink, of course. Um, so I've got Studio Caudia, Lemon Burst Pearls, Amethyst Pearls, and Rose Pink Pearls. So I kind of sprinkled those around the flowers and the sentiment. And then once I was kind of happy with where everything was... I adhered those into place with craft tacky glue and then as a final like afterthought I would have done this before but I didn't really think about it until the card was like done. I took my white jelly roll pen the size 10 so this is the widest one this is the one I show all the time my absolute favorite white gel pen and I just used the gel pen to add little dots and highlights and little details to these flowers like I said I would have done this before adhering them but I didn't think of it. So I just went in and added just random little dots and whatnot. It just gives it that little extra something. And then once that was done, this card was officially done. So like I mentioned earlier in the video, I'll have a link below the video to my blog post. And then in that blog post, I'll link to the challenge. I'll link, I'll have the inspiration image, all that stuff. And then of course, I will have all the links to everything I used directly below as well as on my blog so you can check that out if you are interested thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting all of it i very much appreciate it and i will see you all very soon in the next video bye <laughs>